I'm Stephanie Strathy. I'm the Associate Dean of Global Health Sciences at University of California, San Diego. We were on a vacation to Egypt in November of 2015 over Thanksgiving in the U.S. And Tom got very sick all of a sudden. Um, we thought it was food poisoning, but he just kept throwing up. And I gave him a dose of an antibiotic that we take with us on our travels. And he got worse and worse. And we called a doctor to the ship and the doctor gave him some IV antibiotics and also some fluids and said, oh, he's going to be fine in a couple hours. And he wasn't. He got sicker. We got him medevaced out of there, thankfully, because we had travel insurance. And they took him to... Um, Germany and there he was diagnosed with a giant abscess in his abdomen that was caused by a gallstone that had obstructed his bile duct and inside this abscess lurked the worst superbug on the planet and it turned out to be resistant to almost every antibiotic right off the bat. Well I was really shocked because I'm trained as an infectious disease epidemiologist from the University of Toronto and I used to, you know, plate this bacteria on my Petri dishes back in my classes in the 1980s, and it was, seemed like a pretty wimpy bacterium back then. But over the last few decades, this has become a very nasty bacteria. It is what I consider to be a bacterial kleptomaniac. It steals these antibiotic resistance genes from other bacteria. It turned out that this bacteria was resistant to all antibiotics, so it's what they call pan-resistant, and there was nothing that they could do. Little by little, day by day, he was slipping away and he was going to die unless something drastic happened. He was in the hospital for nine months and I uh, was on a conference call with my colleagues who were at a retreat and one of them was a former surgeon and a university chancellor and he thought I'd hung up the phone. And he said, has anybody told Steph that her husband is going to die? Well, I was terrified. It really hadn't clued into me that he was going to die. There's the one day where I decided to have the talk with Tom. His eyebrows were twitching even though he was in a coma. I wasn't sure if he could hear me, but I said, honey, you know, I know you're fighting really hard, but if you decide that you don't want to fight anymore, I'll understand. But if you want to live, I want to grow old with you. Please squeeze my hand and I'll, I'll leave no stone unturned. And he squeezed my hand. And of course, I was just elated. But then I realized, oh my God, like, how am I going to like solve this problem? I'm not a medical doctor. But I did go home and I sat down um, with my computer and I know how to do a literature search. And um, I went into the Google for Scientists, which is called PubMed. And I put some keywords in there, the name of his superbug, alternative treatments, multi-drug resistance, and up popped a paper with an obscure therapy from 100 years ago called phage therapy. Now, bacteriophages, or phages for short, are viruses that have naturally evolved to attack bacteria. They're 100 times smaller than bacteria, and uh, they were discovered by a French Canadian in 1917, Felix Durrell. And they had been used by this guy to treat people with bacterial infections. Um, and they had something of a heyday in the 1920s and 30s. But then penicillin came on the scene. And so these phages, which were really finicky, they had to be matched to specific bacteria. They were kind of forgotten. Back in the 1980s, I studied virology at the University of Toronto. And my professor there had taught us what bacteriophage were. It's just that I didn't ever know that they were used to treat people. So I got really excited when I thought this could be something that might be able to use to save Tom. So I contacted his doctors here at the University of California, San Diego, and I said, what do you think about phage therapy to cure Tom? And the head of infectious diseases said, you know, this might be ahead of its time, but if you can find some phages that match his bacteria, I'll call the FDA and get approval for compassionate use. And that really meant that he knew he was dying. And so that's what we did. Three days after we injected them into his bloodstream, he woke up. He lifted his head off the pillow and he kissed his daughter's hand. I mean, everybody freaked out. It was just an incredible feeling. Well, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, we all hoped that this was going to work, um, but it worked so quickly. I mean, here's a guy who was hours away, literally from dying, and then he wakes up and he's able to kind of communicate. Good morning. What, what is it that you'd like today? Oh, nice. 
hamburger would be good. A hamburger. We'll see what we can do about that. As a result of Tom's case, we've treated several other people at UC San Diego with phage therapy successfully. In fact, we launched the first dedicated phage therapy center called IPATH, or the Center for Innovative Phage Applications and Therapeutics. We're helping other doctors administer phage around the world, and we're a nonprofit. Um, we've also gotten a lot of calls from Canada, uh, most recently, you know, about a dozen calls just in the last week. And these are patients that have superbug infections that um, antibiotics aren't working for them anymore. Cheers, baby. Superbugs are a global crisis. This is not a problem that's going away. In fact, we don't even know how many people are dying per year in Canada from superbug infections. But we do know that by the year 2050, one person every three seconds is going to be dying from superbugs. And um, so we need to step up to the plate. And Canada is well poised to do that.